with the ones and twos um so i came over here right and where i'm at was not planned this was on the whim and um because it's on the whim um we're going to record some things and um we're going to uh you know basically do the same thing we do every day for the newbies um you know like i said uh, one thing that you will see is that they will make people come out their hotel rooms. They'll make people come out the movies. They'll make people come out restaurants. Um, this this woman, she's she's gonna have to leave pretty soon because uh, you can hear the noise. They're upset right now because they were planning for Denny's. That's where, normally where I, I meet for lunch. We don't eat there, but that's kind of where we all meet at. And so. Um, you can hear the noise in the background, which is perfect because like I said, you know, all this does is prove my case, prove my point. You see how now they have another person coming out here. Um, you got the lady singing the Honda, right? And so, uh, you know, like I said, um, you know, this is what we'll do. Um, but I had definitely have the upper hand. Right, so now you see how they made her get here. You see how they're leaving at the same time. So you notice how they made her specifically in the red car come out, right? So you had a black car here, white car, all these color cars, but they made her. Now, I don't mind that because that's an inconvenience for her. You know what I mean? That's an inconvenience for both of them. I'm pretty sure they work here. They're still going to have to come back and go to work. So you can see that they're making people come out here. You can hear the noise. But the great thing about this is I parked in an open space purposely. I didn't park where they could easily pull up on me. And I parked here. So there's only one person could park here and one person could park here. I didn't park where I could have four or five people just pull in and park next to me. I parked so it'll be obvious. Plus, I parked here because I could see that these people... Um, can see me now. I don't plan to stay here, but I'm sitting here for the moment, right? And now, mind you, right? I didn't plan to come here. This was spontaneous. They had the road closed. I did not know how to go around. Oh, so you see how they had the black lady. Now watch what she do, right? Now watch what she does, right? Got your tag number. All right, so. Like I said, you see, now you see how like once I had the camera, she sped, which is fine. I mean, she didn't get a look at me, so she couldn't ID me or anything, right? You see how they have the everybody here? They're upset, man. Like I said, everything right here now is not planned. Now I get nothing about this is planned. Nothing, nothing about this is planned at all, right? Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my car because I wanted to see him get out his car. So now he was. Like, because I moved my car now, he was never able to ID, right, my next move. So, like I said, now, like I said, I, I do everything for a reason. Um, like I said, if, you, if you've ever had a life, a street life, then, um, if you ever had a street life, then I can tell you that this would be a piece of cake as far as maneuvering around these people. I mean, it, I used to sell weed when it wasn't legal. I've sold cocaine before. I've sold coke before. Crack. I've sold pills before. I did what I had to do at that time um, to keep money in my pocket. But those were like in my early 20s. I'm 29 now, so I haven't you know, sold anything like that since I was like 24. But what I'm telling you is because I have experience in that lifestyle, you know, you're always looking over your shoulder. You're always looking and trying to find out who's doing your dirty. You know what I mean? That's what you're always doing. You're always trying to find out who did you wrong, who's doing your dirty, so on and so forth. So, it's not difficult for me to know when I'm being followed or when I'm being tailed. It's not difficult for me to know when shit is shifty and doesn't make sense um, because it's so obvious, you know? It's so obvious. Another thing that's gonna benefit me, that road is closed. So that traffic right there, 
is going to be minuscule. There's not going to be a lot of traffic to my right because the road is closed. You understand? So that's another crucial part of this. They can only really come around the building, which you see the guy in the Chevy truck. And they can maybe come around here. There's only two entrances to come around. Um, so, like I said, you know, right now this is spontaneous. It was not planned. And, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited because, um, it just feels good when things work, you know? You have certain things that work. You know what I mean? Like, when you have things that work, then, um, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, man. Um, I got, uh, I have a 3.7 G, I have a 3.75 GPA right now in college. Um, that's great. You know what I mean? So school is doing good. I took some time to come to my mom's house, use her Wi-Fi, kill some birds with some stones because, you know, at my house, I have internet, but they try to manipulate my internet. They try to fuck with the, the connection and they try to make noise when I'm studying. When I'm in, when my, in my class, they want to make noise. They want to cause distractions. They want to have noise. They want to be banging or, you know what I mean? So... I've been able to control that because I've, I've, you know, literally just gone up to them and I've approached them. One thing I did this morning was that a neighbor, Rob, the guy who I told you has the Audi and he has the Tahoe. My neighbor has the Audi A6 and he has a, a Chevy Tahoe, the black one. I went up him today, right, because they would try to do the same time exit, but they were late because I had kind of like opened up my door first to act like I was going out. And then I went back. I didn't all the way go out the house. I just stepped back in the house. And when I and I saw him getting into his car, so I said, fuck it, let me go out here now. So, you know, he was sitting there with his door open, like, you know, like like it like they watching me. And this guy is in his fifties. And so what I did was you see how they have the blue truck here positioned? But they can only do so much because they're working on the road. So they really can't move those trucks around too. But um so, yeah, so what took place, man, was, you know, he was in my face and shit. And so I just walked over to him, so I slowly, casually, and I didn't get on recording, you know what I mean? But I didn't want to be phony, I, and it was a real moment for me. And I went up to him, and I had my mask on, and he, I told him to put his window down. And so he started to back up. And I'm pretty sure that he, when I was walking over to him, because I didn't run, I'm pretty sure he had time to get on his phone, call his handlers, and, and have the phone on... Um, speaker phone and recording me and having someone listen to our conversation I was walked up to him I walked up to him and you know he looked stupid and he was like what do you want I said I just wanted to call you a coward to your face right and I laughed and I put my mask down and I walked back to my car or to my house my driveway and he said fuck you right and so I'm just walking back because like I said pardon my back pardon my back because you a bitch you ain't built like that and I'm pretty sure he's strapped I'm pretty sure he got you know I'm pretty sure he's a uh, concealed carry um, but I mean, I don't, I got guns too. So that shit don't scare me. We both got guns, nigga. So you, we both going to die. What do you want to do? Um, so when that happened, right, you know, he was, I walked off and he was still trying to talk to me. And he, he was like, he was like, you a bitch. I'm like, well, Rob, I've been called you that. <laughs> like, bro, I've been called you one of those. And then, so he's driving past my house still talking. He's like, you're crazy. I'm like, you're damn right. You're fucking right. I'm crazy. Absolutely fucking right. You ain't seen the half of but it's good to know that my neighbor, that that my neighbors, and you see how now they're trying to let them go. Now that's a dark Prius. That road is closed. Right, the road is closed. So either he must be there, and they drive them little bitch ass Priuses too. So I'm pretty sure somebody that works because a lot of these dudes live in Virginia, West Virginia, or Pennsylvania, and these dudes, you know, they they buy them little bitch ass cars for mileage. Because I already know I got homeboys that do construction, so they buy hoopties and little bitch ass cars to get back and forth to work. Because gas mileage, because they're doing like 150 miles on that car a day. You know, they're driving 150 miles uh, a day. So that would have to have been an employee because of the... Uh... But yeah, now I'm going to move again. Because I like, you know, I always like moving because... um. 
when you move, it creates uncertainty. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about creating uncertainty. You know what I mean? I'm all about uncertainty. I'm all about defying the odds. So, um, yeah, man, I'm going to record because I know that when you keep them honest by recording, they don't like when you're recording them. Um, but yeah, man, so I basically <sighs> told Rob he was a coward. I didn't even call him out his name. I could have called him a bitch, but he already knows it. I've been calling that. I flicked him off, but I called him a coward because he is one. Any man that does what he's told and not what he wants is a coward. In my eyes, I do what I want to do. They try to make me do what, I, what they want me to do, but it doesn't work. That's why they follow me around. Because if they could control me, then they wouldn't have to be around me. If I was like everyone else, then they wouldn't have to single me out, right? But because I'm not, that's why they have to single me out. Because they can't control me. Because I'm not predictable. Because they can't just come and say anything to me disrespectfully you know what i mean so they have to watch their tone with me plus they don't like the fact that i'm young you know i'm 29 like i'm older now but i've been going through this shit since i was 25 so you know what i mean they 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 don't they thought that i would crack and crumble and i've only gotten stronger but um yeah man I, I you know like i said look where i'm at i'm in the loft hotel in arundel mills maryland um, and, uh, meeting up with a couple of homeboys to go to the casino to, um, to, you know, to try my luck a little bit. I'm not really a gambler, but, uh, I do like going out when I have eyes and ears with me. I don't go out anymore by myself. I mean, I do, but I don't because, um, it's just, it's really no, no fun. You see this nigga right here in the, um, with the, uh, with the cigarette in, in his mouth now, walking back. Right? Oh, yeah, fuck that nigga. But yeah, man, like I said, um, you know, keep things ten toes down. You know, keep everything treetop tall. Like my man Baby Paul said, I ain't got no hair on my tongue. <laughs> Like my man said, I ain't got no hair on my tongue. So, uh, you got this nigga out here in some khakis out here, a rat. Now, this would be the same nigga with a mixtape, talking about he's the realest nigga a lot, but he'll be the same nigga out here with a phone and informant. I mean, this is why I don't support these pussy ass niggas. That's why a lot of these niggas in the cities are bitches. You understand? Because, like I said, you know, you really look at the world and you, when I know what I know now, there's no way that they don't know kingpins. There's no way in the world they don't know Escobar was selling the drugs he was selling. I honestly believe that whole Escobar predicament was because Escobar probably stopped t giving the money. He wanted to have full control of his operation. That's kind of what it is, bro. When you go up against the big leagues and you tell them that you want a percentage back or you want to negotiate or renegotiate a deal that you made with the CIA, because that's really who runs that shit, they'll kill you. They'll take you out. You know what I mean? Because you gotta understand, these Mexican cartels run America. They run America through the children trafficking, the pedophilia, the drug smuggling, and everything else. The Mexican cartel has America by the balls. I mean, if you really look at all the movies, everybody had to go through who? Either the Italian or the Mexicans. So what's that let you know? They let they let you they like you to believe that the Jews are really in power. Maybe sadistically, but as far as operation and, and power, as far as stiff arm and strength, you got the, no, you, you got the, uh, you definitely got the Italians and the, uh, and the Mexicans for those. Without a doubt, hands down, um, those are the pioneers of the dope business. And so, like I said, man, you know, I look at things just crazy. You look at rap music, you look all, all that shit is fake, man. All them niggas rapping and talking all that shit. Niggas geesing, man. Them niggas is cap. Big cap. Big cap. 
Because there's no way in the world you can tell me that these niggas had technology to monitor me 24-7. But these niggas in Baltimore, D.C., Chi-Town, Philly, Detroit. And, and I know niggas in each one of them states that I named that are going through what I'm going through right now. <sighs> I didn't know them before, but I know them now. And what I'm saying is you're not going to tell me that these niggas, you know what I mean, are not working with the feds. It's impossible, son. It's impossible to sell drugs in 2019 without having a connection with a CIA, a CI, a confidential informant. It's yo, that's what these niggas are, bro. These, this guy right here is a CI. He's a confidential informant, son. He's a confidential informant. He's a CI. Now, there's nothing confidential about him. Nothing. Nothing confidential. And I'm not saying that like these niggas were bred to be CIs. I'm telling you, this is what they're trying to be groomed to be. If you don't get along with New World Order, if you don't put your head down between your tails and just drink beer, watch the football game, don't ask no questions, be a slave, then you got an issue. And you got 90% of America that just does just that day. Go to work all day, drink beer, watch the games. That's it, bro. In rotation until they die. Not me, nigga. I'm different. You know what I mean? I'm different. I'm different. You know what I mean? So, this nigga gonna be smoking a whole pack. He gonna smoke all his Newports. He got to buy a whole pack of Newports. Again. Which is good. And kill himself again. But like I said, um, you know what I mean? He, he, these niggas are not special, bro. Like, this nigga right here and his braids, had our night came over here, I never would have seen him. So, it's not that deep. You know what I mean? It's not that deep. I would have never seen this nigga had I not decided to come over here. This is not planned. The only, they're trying to plan now because they don't know what I'm doing. They don't know why I'm here. They don't know what I'm here, what my business is here. So they can't tell when I'm about to move, what I'm about to do. So everything is systematic right now. And that's I have them right where I want them. Right, because like I said, I was supposed to be in a different area. It's not so. It's not the case now. So, you know, like I said, man, this is a... Uh, this is uh, chestnut checkers, but the only chess part is not the people you're around. It's the higher ups. These people are not, and plus it's cold outside too. So I, I like the fact that the outside is cold. I know it's cold as fuck outside. That's why I got heated seats. Because it's cold as fuck outside. I would not be standing outside for no fucking reason. I would not. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I definitely wouldn't be smoking. This. Come on now. You're going to smoke a cigarette and catch an ammonia at the same time? That's how stupid people are. So you go, that's why niggas get lungitis and cancer and all that shit in their lungs because you guys want to stand out fucking December all day and smoke cigarettes and then get pneumonia and a cold at the same time. You get bronchitis and you're in the hospital and you're dead. That's probably be the tale of a lot of people, especially around this motherfucker. All these niggas do around here is smoke cigarettes. So, you know, people don't, you know, people don't make sense. That shit doesn't make sense to me at all. You know what I mean? But it's cold as fuck outside. Believe that. Cold outside. Believe that. So, I'm glad that I'm not outside right now. <laughs> you see how the construction slowed down, too? All that construction slowed down, too, right? Doo doo doo. But yeah, I'm going to keep this video up.